for Vladisberg. Sees the opening. Monica Wright delivers again. Michael Firestone. Virginia wins. The Cavaliers are going to the College World Series. Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. And brought to you in part by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. On this edition of Cavalier Sports Weekly, presented by the Virginia Lottery. It's different hearing over the radio and knowing that, you know, so many people are listening. Welcome to Cavalier Sports Weekly. I'm Joe Torres, and I'm here three on the football team. We've got plenty of football, soccer, and much more on today's show. But first, let's get started with our play of the week. On third down, Yates pump fakes, and now he's going to throw this ball. It's knocked up into the air. Dangerous pass, and it's intercepted. Minifield lays out for it. Got a hit on the quarterback, and when I hit him, I knew he was passing, and the ball just went up in the air, and Minifield was there to catch it, to get a sack, I mean, get a pick. So, it worked out well for us and got us off the field, and that's and that's what we need to do on third down. The second turnover of the afternoon goes the way of the Wahoos. This portion of Cavalier Sports Weekly has been brought to you by SunTrust Mortgage. Live solid, bank solid. Stay tuned. Virginia game highlights are coming up next. Welcome back to the show. Our team traveled to Chapel Hill this weekend to take on the Tar Heels for our first conference game of the season. Let's check out the game story. Long time here now. A lot of hours. Provide our own passion. Provide our own energy. Take it personally. I do. Okay? Take it personally. Take every plate personally. Under center with one man in the backfield behind him. That's Drone. He'll get the carry, and he is gobbled up at the right side of that offensive line, not getting the protection. One next to the other on the other side. In the meantime, handoff goes to Drone, and he is buried again by Greer. We feel as a defense, we have a tough defense overall, and then uh, especially when you start making some plays and holding them a couple times, you really just get uh, confidence in the guys around you. So I think those first couple stops were key, and uh, we just kept building off that the whole game. And a tree of receivers all stacked together on that left side of the line. Takes the snap. Here comes the pressure. Vic Hall on the blitz. There's the sack on the opposite side. Well, we put a new um, a new wrinkle in our defense today, and Coach Grow told us it would work. It was going to bug the quarterback, and the quarterback was out back there, and he wasn't comfortable the whole game. So we just put the pressure on him, and we kept rushing and kept being relentless, and, and it worked out, worked out for us in the end. Yates today, three for five through the air, 35 yards passing. The bulk of it coming on a 22-yard pass to Greg Little. He takes the snap. Pressure coming. He just managed to get rid of it before he was absolutely belted by Brandon Woods, who came on a safety blitz. Yates is slow getting up. No down lineman. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up, but now scrambling. Yates shakes one defender, but he will fall down. Coming in, Zane Parr. You know, we had a big challenge down here, uh, one of the biggest rivalries in the South. Um, and, you know, we just wanted to do it for ourselves, our family, our, our friends, and, and everyone that, that was behind us in the Virginia community. We came in here with the intention to play some tight coverage. And uh, those kids really stepped up and did that. That was a big part of the plan. And, and they uh, chase on the slot, uh, Chris, uh, Rossi. Uh, have all those guys operating like they did. That was that was a big plus for us. Sewell out of the shotgun. Javaris Brown, the man in motion, going from right to left. Now three receivers to the left for Sewell. Sewell dumps it off of the flat. Ball was bobbled for a moment by Simpson, but he handles it. Now he's across the 40 and spun down to the 37-yard line. Nice hard run there. Here's Sewell going out of the shotgun as we start things on a big third down to begin the second quarter. Here's a pass, rifle to the far side. Torsha makes the catch, first down, Virginia. Sewell takes the snap now to the shotgun. Pump fix, rifles the pass over the middle. Ball incomplete and is fortunate. There's the flag, though. Javaris Brown was in the mix with three blue jerseys around him, but as long as his 34. 
Here's the snap. Hold is down. Kick is up. It's got the distance, and it is good. So Robert Randolph bangs home his longest field goal of the season. Rashawn Jackson did check into the game. He'll fake the handoff to Simpson. Throw a pass wide open. Rashawn Jackson across the 40 to the 45. He's plowing ahead to the 47-yard line. And that's Javaris Brown going from right to left. Now he lines up on that left side. Here comes the pressure again. Sewell dumps the pass off. Great catch by Simpson with a one hand. Uh, our offensive line did a great job up front. The receivers did a good job of getting in on safeties and cornerbacks. And uh, they just opened up lanes, and I just did what I had to do, just run through them. Michael is back, and we're excited to see what he's going to do the rest of this season. Snap is off, hold is down, kick is up. Looks like it's got the distance. Is it true? Yes, sir. Malone setback. Man in motion coming from left to right. Hand up to Drone. Drone has an opening in the middle. He pops the football, but it was after he was wrapped up. On fourth down and one. Virginia packs the line of scrimmage. Handoff goes to Houston. Houston with an opening. A first down and more across the 25 to the 24-yard line. On to try Casey Barth, who has missed a field goal in three straight games. Here's the snap. Kick is off. It's got the distance, and it is good. So Carolina's on the board. Sewell's under, under center now. He's going to fake the handoff to Rashawn Jackson. Play action pass. He gets belted right as he throws it. Completes the pass. Vic Hall is not holding on this occasion. Spot is down. Hold is uh, there. And here comes the kick. It's got the distance. And it is perfect. Robert Randolph drills one. Third down. Yates pump fakes. Now he's going to throw this ball. It's knocked up into the air. Dangerous pass. And it's intercepted. Minifield lays out for it. He catches it off of the deflection. All I did was get to the ball and catch it. Nate, Nate Collins deserves that. Deserves all the credit for that play. It was a key play just because we just needed some momentum to get going again. And we got it. We got it. And we, we capitalized. Got a hit on the quarterback, and when I hit him, I knew he was passing, and the ball just went up in the air, and thank God Minifield was there to catch it, to get a sack, I mean, get a pick. Virginia by six. Sewell passes. It is complete. He's going out of the shotgun now. Smith left. He's got two receivers right. He's going to take it on a quarterback keeper again. This time he's got the yardage and then some. He keeps the legs churning. Simpson left. Rashawn Jackson right. Takes the snap. Going to hand the football off. Simpson with a convoy of blockers. He goes to the end zone. Touchdown. Michael Simpson into the end zone. And Virginia stretches the lead with now 5.49 to go. Yeah, um, we've been having success on that play a lot today. And, um, you know, we just wanted to score in the game right there. And, and that's just what we did. And got a good block up front um, and just, just run in. Here's a pass, knocked down incomplete. What a play by Corey Mosley on fourth down. And Virginia's defense is going to hold. Yates out of the shotgun. He'll take the snap, going to fire this pass. And it's intercepted by Cook. You just mentioned his name, and he comes up with the pick. He'll have it at the 40-yard line. And Virginia puts the icing on this one. That locker room in there, um, if you've ever been in one and participated in one, uh, everything that we all do uh, for months and weeks and whatnot is to experience the uh, it's still lasting a little bit, but to experience the five or six minutes when the team comes in the locker room and has that sense of satisfaction, that's what it's all about. Cavalier fans, join me, Dave Kane, at Charlottesville Kroger locations for a chance to win two sweet tickets and hospitality passes to the Virginia Tech-Virginia football game on November 28th. This portion of Cavalier Sports Weekly is brought to you by the Virginia Lottery. More than $4 billion to K-12 public education since 1999. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. Denzel Bro loves to talk. I should know. I hear him every day at practice and on the radio. Fortunately, I like listening to Denzel, and hopefully you will too, in our Student Athlete of the Week feature. I grew up in South Orange, New Jersey. Um, it's basically northern New Jersey. I'm like 20, 25 minutes from New York City. I actually didn't start playing football until eighth grade, one year of Pop Warner. Um, and that's kind of when I really started. A lot of my friends were like, come on, you're, you're real tall and everything, and you should get out there and play. And, and I mean, I always thought about it in the back of my mind, and I, I guess I really considered it strongly that year. And ever since eighth grade, I've been playing and loved it.
Honestly, at first, I didn't even have UVA in mind. I actually considered staying a little closer to home, um, possibly like Rutgers, um, Maryland, somewhere in Delaware, things like that. But when I got started getting recruited by them and the coaches started sending a lot of letters to the house and everything, I started really looking into the school and I realized how much of a good fit it was for me, you know, both academically and athletically. To be one of the you know top schools, presti prestigious schools academically and everything, my parents fell in love with it and I did too on first sight when I came down here and visited. I love the you know the environment, the scenery, and things like that, and, and I fell in love with the coaches and, and the way the ways in which you know they they really took me in, took me under my wing, and the players how they really like you know just invited me and, and made me feel welcome and made me feel as one, even though I was still you know in high school and, and wasn't even in college yet. My dad told me a lot about his, you know, his prior years with NFL teams, with the Jets and Giants and things like that. And it definitely influenced me a lot. And being in a 3-4 defense, you know, the linebackers get to do a lot in this defense. You know, they get to, you know, uh, you know, rush the passer and drop in coverage and things like that. So it was really just, it was like a total package. You know, you could do a little bit of everything. That's what really um, what made it more intriguing to come here. And, and, and that's one of the main reasons I chose to come here is because of the coach and, and because of all his accolades prior to here. Here's a handoff. Grimes breaks the initial tackle from Nate Collins, but Denzel Burrell comes in to finish him off. Well, you know, I always knew just from having interactions with Denzel before, there's certain guys that you get to know over the course of your time covering a team that you have a sense could be good at this sort of thing, and, and Denzel was one of those guys. Uh, I had a, I talked to the academics advisor uh, for football and uh, got his sense on what he thought, a couple of names that he thought would be good for something like this, and Denzel was one of the first names that he mentioned. I love broadcasting, and, and I'm really interested in, you know, radio and how everything gets put together and things like that, and I was just happy, you know, for Dave to accept me. As, as an intern, internee, and and everything, and I'm, I'm loving every minute of it. He's been he's been great for it, and, and he's been a lot of fun to work with. Very eager to learn, and uh, has shown a real penchant for for delivery too. I I, I call him the. He, he, he does his reads on the first take every time. Hi, this is senior linebacker Denzel Burrell with your Cavalier Minute. Fifth-year senior tailback Michael Simpson. Is he hasn't made a mistake. I call him the 1972 Dolphins. He's got this streak of perfection going on right now. It's amazing. Like, I make, you know, a few takes a lot of the time when I'm recording things, but he, he just hits it first time. It's pretty amazing for a guy who just started. I learned a lot about um, interviewing people, actually, you know, what, what type of questions to ask, you know, to, to get them to speak more because, you know, certain questions you kind of only get one-word answer. And it, and it kind of hurts an interview and kind of hinders in a way, but I've learned a lot about what to ask and what not to ask and a lot of the open-ended questions that you should ask so that they can really, you know, feel comfortable around around the uh, interview and, and really just let, let it all out and, and really give you a great story. It was weird, you know, to hear your own voice and everything and, and uh, you know, I hear, I hear it in here every, you know, when we go over it and everything and we review it and we play it, but it's just different hearing it over the radio and knowing that, you know, so many people are listening and, and it's not just, you know, low Local. It's, it's all of Virginia and the surrounding area and everything. So I, I was so proud. I sent it to my family and sent it to my mom and dad and everything. And I think they're making a CD of every, I mean, you know, uh, combining all of them, making like a compilation of every every single week that I do. A guy who's played the sports has a, a true advantage when it comes to just knowing the game and knowing how to respond on the other side of that microphone. You know, I think a lot of people don't recognize the fact that these guys learn when they're being interviewed. And he's done so many of those. I think he brings that with him wherever he goes. And, you know, I see Chris Lady. He actually was a former player and he actually works with you know uh, radio and everything now with UVA and, and the football team and, and that's something I would definitely look into you know I'm, I'm a I'm a big fan of sports center and everything uh, you know I love Stuart Scott and the gang every morning so uh, that's always attracted me I mean if I could find a job in Bristol somewhere or something it would definitely be uh, to my liking so I mean I definitely would definitely consider pursuing it after football. Next Saturday is homecoming at Virginia in this week's Cavalier flashback we revisit some great moments of past homecoming games at Scott Stadium. Homecoming on October 5th, 1991. The Kansas Jayhawks met a stingy, opportunistic Virginia defense in Scott Stadium. This was a season in which the Cavaliers allowed only one regular season opponent to score more than 20 points and held six teams to 10 points or less. Midway through the third quarter, the Cavaliers trailed 13 to 10 when linebacker P.J. Killian picked off a screen pass at the Jayhawk 21 and rumbled into the end zone to give Virginia the lead. The Cavalier offense then struck with a pair of big plays. First, six foot seven inch quarterback Matt Blunden displayed mobility and athleticism in evading the Kansas pass rush before finding Tyrone Davis for a 19 yard touchdown. And tailback Terry Kirby produced the biggest play from scrimmage when he galloped 64 yards to secure a 31 to 19 victory.
In 1993, Virginia's homecoming festival included an invitation to the Ohio Bobcats. The Cavaliers trounced their guests 41-7 with the highlight of the game coming on an 87-yard touchdown bomb from Simeon Willis to Larry Holmes. When Texas ventured into Scott Stadium on September 28, 1996, Anthony Poindexter roamed the defensive secondary with reckless abandon. Midway through the second quarter, ACC Player of the Year Tiki Barber sliced through the Texas defense for a 16-yard score. Then, just two and a half minutes later, Barber would work his offensive magic again. He checks to Tiki Barber. Barber explodes. 25-20, 15-10, a cut at the 10, to the 5. He scores a touchdown. Tiki's made some great runs, but that might have been the best of them all. While Tiki's heroics dazzled his brother Rondé and the fans, the defense wasn't about to take a back seat. Virginia intercepted four passes and left Texas quarterback James Brown singing the blues. The turnover set up another Tiki Barber touchdown burst. Hand off Tiki Barber, Barber off tackle, Barber still on his feet, touchdown! The senior co-captain finished the day with 121 yards rushing and Ferrier and the rest of the Cavs showed their might to the entire nation. Another impressive defensive effort characterized the 2007 homecoming game against the University of Connecticut. Despite a lopsided disadvantage in field position in the early going, Virginia held the Huskies to a pair of field goals before a bit of Vic Hall razzle-dazzle led to Virginia's first touchdown. Here's Vic Hall looking downfield, puts it up for Gorham. Gorham is wide open to catch, 15-10 to the eight-yard line. Ultimately, it was a 17-16 victory dominated by a Chris Long-led defense that ensured another homecoming celebration. Coming up after the break. This portion of Cavalier Sports Weekly is brought to you by the Virginia Athletics Foundation. Welcome back to Cavalier Sports Weekly. Up next, we've got men's and women's soccer and much more in our Olympic Sports Spotlight. We started a little tentative, but we were able to work things out and get our attack moving. Flora Vogels, she just organizes them really well. They kept their cool. They were a little hyper sometimes, but uh, overall they were able to keep Boston College out of the circle and keep Chelsea Fioli from uh, playing the ball. important that we got off to a good start and I, I thought we did that I thought it was a great goal from Caitlin Miskell and, um, and I was really proud of the way the team came back but nice to get the shot out as well in an ACC game I, I think they, they deserve a lot of credit for that you know I think we could have made the game a lot a lot easier for us especially through the first half and, and maybe 10 minutes into the second half but you know I, I think that uh, we, we have players that are capable of finishing I think that where we got better from Thursday till now is just our decisions and, and getting into, into positions where we could get quality chances. To be honest with you that, that's one of the best teams we played all year. Yeah, that, this wasn't like a Tuesday night uh, where we were flat. That, that was one of the best teams we played all year. I haven't seen them play, but that, that, that was a very good team. And uh, our second half and both the overtimes were absolutely fantastic. I can't be more proud of our guys. I mean, we were methodical. We were, we were disciplined. We were, you know, I, I told the guys going into overtime, it was, like a, it was like a boxing match. You know, I felt like we had them on the ropes. You know, it's just a matter of time, you know, and I, and I felt like even in the overtime that it was coming. And then as I got down to the last two minutes there, I was like, ah, oh, okay, it's going to be a tie. And then sure enough, 55 seconds 
left and uh, Chris Agorso gets in. He deserved it. He worked his backside off. I mean, he was trying to take the team on his shoulders in the last couple of plays, and I'm so happy for him. It's his first goal of the year, too. You had two very good teams, and uh, there weren't a ton of chances. We knew that it was going to come down to something like that. We almost scored in the overtime on a, on a very similar play. It's just it's heart-wrenching, I feel, for the guys because they, they work very, very hard for this. And, uh, you know, we never play for a tie. But to get out of here today with a point would have been, a, would have been probably a more fair result. Uh, and the guys worked hard to, uh, to at least get a result, meaning a point, out of this in the conference game. And with a minute 39 left to, to, to give up a goal like that, it's heart-wrenching for the guys. In other Cavalier sports action this week, Thanks for watching Cavalier Sports Weekly. A lot of our teams are home this week, so be sure to come out and support the Cavaliers and see some great games. Our men's soccer team hosts Longwood and Clockner Stadium on Wednesday evening, while our women's team has a big ACC matchup on Thursday night against the Maryland Terrapins. The Aquatic Fitness Center is the place to be next Friday at 1, when our swimming and diving teams open their seasons against Florida State. Volleyball has a big weekend with NC State visiting Memorial Gym on Friday and North Carolina in town on Sunday. And our number three ranked field hockey team hosts Cornell next Saturday and then takes on perennial power Wake Forest on Sunday. We'll be back next week with coverage of those events and much more. But until then, go Hoos. Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. And brought to you in part by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.